This is Dr. Jerome Corsi, and today is Monday, June 26th, 2023. Thank you for joining us here on thetruthcentral.com. Our uh, first story today uh, is one that was being run over the weekend. I really caught my attention. It's about the uh, catastrophic failures of the Biden administration and the fact that everyone is now really thinking in terms of us facing an apocalypse. That it, It's ama- amazing how quickly the country has deteriorated into this critical theory madness. Uh, the points that are mentioned here are pretty devastating that, you know, you see that the police departments can't stop looting. You see the cities deteriorating. It, it really increasingly feels like the country's on the wrong track. Uh, the world is increasingly unsafe. And uh, in 2020, more than 20 million Americans, nearly 7% of the households were planning for an emergency stockpiling canned goods and cupboards, uh, doing all kinds of things to basically prepare for uh, an an apocalypse. We've had a pandemic. We've got war in Ukraine. We've got uh, Taiwan being threatened. We've got uh, the Congress talking about whether or not we're going to back NATO and go to war with Russia. And these things are, and the Biden administration, this is clearly the worst president in history of the United States. I didn't think Jimmy Carter could be beaten, but we now have a new low standard. And it's amazing to me that anyone could think that you could have a president who is cognitively impaired. And that seems to be the case here. Now, the second story I want to cover, this blatant political corruption, which again appeared over the weekend. And uh, they went through uh, uh, listing the different things that were really amazing here. The more we learn about the 2020 election, the more undeniable comes that Biden owed his victory to blatant political corruption. We find that with the uh, FBI doing everything they can to suppress the Hunter Biden story. The FBI, the IRS probe into Biden's money laundering problems from hostile nations, which uh, you know were not investigated, aren't being investigated. The FBI authenticated Hunter Biden's laptop a year before the New York Post reported on his contents and did nothing. The FBI used its 2016 Russian collusion probe for two years to try to destroy Donald Trump in a political mission which the FBI should not be involved in. Biden is still trying to destroy his political opponent, Donald Trump, with lawfare on this, I think, completely bogus charge under the Espionage Act of 1917. And it goes on, the CIA in, conclu- in collusion with the Biden campaign seeded disinformation claiming the laptop itself was Russian disinformation. The FBI used a briefing to tell senators that basically the you know, quashing their own probe, discouraging the Senate from investigating. When the story broke weeks before the election, when the polling indicated would have altered enough Democrat votes to send Trump to a second term, Twitter and Facebook orchestrated an unprecedented and anti-democratic mass censorship program. It just goes on and on. In December 2020, after the Operation Success and Biden's victory, the FBI agents working uh, celebrated the outcome on Twitter. The FBI subsequently paid Twitter $3.5 million for the staff hours expended on their influence peddling in favor of Biden. Uh, This is not the United States of America. This is not what the FBI is supposed to be doing. I think we have a growing move to defund the FBI uh, because they're fundamentally not doing the job they need to be doing, uh, which is combating crime, not not politically destroying opponents of the deep left. Now, I'm going to cover a couple more stories, and I want to get uh, Chris's comments here, my producer, but... I've been following this San Francisco story, and now we've got this mayor in San Francisco who is completely woke, and she is, um, her name is, what is her name? Her name is um, 
uh, Mayor London Breed taking a knee there to in City Hall to the Black Lives Matter. Well, now the San Francisco has 30% of the city's office space is now vacant. Westfield Mall, this beautiful, largest mall in downtown area in Union Square, is uh, could be demolished. She wants to demolish it and use the land for something different. wonder what she has in mind, maybe more homeless camps. She's searching for solutions for the exodus of business and people from the metro area. And she has reversed herself on defund the police. But again, what police are you going to get to come to, to uh, San Francisco with this commercial real estate crisis? San Francisco is completely a failed city at this point. And I saw a story which was breaking this morning that some of the supermarkets in San Francisco are beginning to put in barriers and, and massive doors to prevent shoplifting, just to slow it down. There's a 10% increase in shoplifting really across San Francisco. Uh, and they are having these, you know, hit raids where people just hit the store and come in and shoplift. Nobody can do anything about it. San Francisco is passing a an ordinance not to bother with, you know, don't disrupt the uh, looters because you may get hurt. Well, I mean, this is, this is the city being run. Uh, it's a democratic hellhole at this point, one of the most beautiful cities in America. And this is where we're headed if we, uh, you know, abandon God and abandon the principles and morals that have gotten us here for this crazy woke agenda. Chris, you want to comment? It's the flood of what I like to call the George Floyd laws. If they started back in 2020, where these people took advantage of uh, George Floyd riots and, the, and the, polit the politicians kowtowing to everything when it comes to social justice warriors, the socialist movement which took that all over and everything that falls down. So defund the police was the big one. And it, it wasn't the start of the downfall of these cities, but it did accelerate what was happening already. And again, that was all against Trump. That was the 2020 was one of the campaigns to defeat Trump. And when they first couldn't impeach him twice, they decided <laughs> then they would destroy the country with Black Lives Matters. And we had riots all through Portland, Oregon, after day, after day, after day. And people get arrested, then released. I mean, this is, this is anarchy. Uh, I'm really, um, this is the truth central. And we're pressing the truth. And the truth here is that the country is in bad shape. And I want to reach here for a couple of books, Chris, but uh, just point out, you know, the, the cover some stories on the climate. Uh, the climate is not, carbon dioxide is not heating up the earth so that we're going to have a catastrophe. It's complete nonsense. And if we go to the book section, the two books I've got that I want to stress on this are The Truth About Energy, Global Warming, and Climate Change. Take some time to actually read the book and see how the Milankovic cycles, the way the earth goes around the sun, that's far more impactful than having ice ages. We've had ice ages where we've had far more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, far more in geologic time. We can't just look at the last 150 or 250 years and try to make sense out of what's going on with the climate. This, these are effects that go over tens of thousands of years. And uh, the second book, which I'm, which in print, coming into print now, which is The Truth on um, Neo-Marxism, Cultural Maoism, and Anarchy. This is what we're headed toward. And I'm constantly saying, if we don't get back to the fundamental principles, we're going to be going through a devastation that is not going to be what we want to live through, for sure. Let's continue. The... I've cut, I posted quite a few stories today, and I want to um, get to this next one here, which is really, I think, essential on what, what you know where we're headed with China. I mean, China is economy. Even China's economy is faltering. They won't tell you this much. You'll constantly hear about how China's expanding and how China is doing very well. Well, the uh, China's having a wave of joblessness. There's anxiety over the lack of global trade going on. That's why energy prices are coming down a bit because, again, demand uh, about you know, economic activity in the world is slowing down. We've got so much massive debt and we keep spending more money 
We have trillions and trillions of dollars being made up by the Federal Reserve, buying our own debt. Uh, the United States government's a Ponzi scheme. Now, two-thirds of China's 100 million young urban population uh, is looking for work. Now, if that's the case, China's in trouble. Because if you've got a youthful market that can't find uh, employment, it's going to cause massive disruption within China. Now, China will just clamp down, lock everybody up. But China's central bank has begun cutting interest rates where the rest of the world is raising interest rates. China knows if it doesn't cut interest rates, it's going to have massive economic disorder. China's on the brink, constantly on the brink of economic failure. If it doesn't have a lot of cheap labor, often slave labor, in order to uh, fuel the international trade. And uh, I've been opposed to this since I've been opposing the George W. Bush and the Security and Prosperity Partnership of, the, of North America when he wanted to create this North American F Free Trade Group, which would be the North American Union, that basically sending all the jobs of manufacturing to China is suicidal. Because if we do not have manufacturing here in the United States, who's going to buy the cheap Chinese goods? And it's completely immoral and unethical and, and destructive to say because China has the slave labor, it's okay for us to utilize goods that come from Chinese slave labor. Okay, now a lot of things happened over the weekend with uh, Russia. This uh, Wagner group appeared to be conducting a coup. Uh, I'm not sure. We don't get enough honest reporting coming out of Ukraine to really know what the situation is. Uh, the, our press wants to say that the Ukraine are the freedom fighters. The Democrats and the mainstream media have gone in totally for war with Putin. And this is insane. Donald Trump said, you know, back, what do we need NATO for? We're not in the Cold War anymore. And all you're going to do is push China and Russia together. They have two of the most anti-U.S. countries, our two superpower rivals, opposed to us. And that's what's happened. And now we've got Putin moving nuclear weapons into Belarus. So this head of the Wagner group goes into Belarus. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that this isn't entirely a setup and we won't see the Wagner group attacking uh, Ukraine from Belarus, which would be a much more strategic way to attack Ukraine if you're going after Kiev. And if Putin continues to get pushed, his threats to use nuclear weapons are getting more and more serious and more and more credible. There was a uh, discussion over the weekend about what NATO is going to do. This is a, uh, I'm gonna, there's a Republican bill that's been introduced essentially saying that NATO's Article 5 does not override constitutional war powers of the United States. This is uh, led by Rand Paul. Now, what's at stake here is this. If Russia were to use nuclear weapons, tactical nuclear weapons, there would be a move within NATO to declare this Article 5, which is a mutual defense pact. In other words, if one nation is attacked, all of NATO is attacked. This was a world, this was a World War II, post-World War II idea when we were opposing Russia moving into Eastern Europe, which was largely caused by FDR at the end of World War II caving in to Stalin. And I think FDR essentially had been pro-Stalin for his entire presidency. Certainly from the 1930s on, the left in the United States embraced Marxism. When the Berlin Wall collapsed and Russia renounced communism, that's when the American left turned against Russia. And now the idea of going to war with Putin is insanity. Uh, so this is an important point that we're a member of NATO. If NATO asserts Article 5, then the question is, does that supersede Congress's responsibility to declare war? Are we automatically forced into war? That's the problem with these international organizations. They want to supersede our sovereignty, where the World Health Organization or the United Nations or NATO 
can make a decision, and we have no choice under our Constitution to say, no, we don't want to do this. To go into war with Russia is suicidal at this point and is not going to serve anybody any benefit. The whole idea in Ukraine, Ukraine's been a divided country since before World War II. The western part of Ukraine has been neo-Nazi. It still is today. We're, fi we're fighting with the neo-Nazi forces. And with the corruption in Ukraine, this massive, massive corruption, we're seeing the money that's going into the billions we're sending to Ukraine, large parts of that are getting stolen. The weapons are not ending up in the battlefield. We're giving more and more high-powered weapons to Ukraine, which ups the ante of what it's going to cost Russia not to lose. At some point or other, Putin is going to say he's tired of this, and he'll use tactical nukes. And that's been what's been discussed all weekend. This has been one of the major themes all weekend, and it's not being widely reported. You know, you look at the New York Times, New York Times wants to say, well, this uh, Wagner group coming into Moscow, it shows how Putin is being undermined. Again, we've got so much lousy reporting. Putin is not undermined. You don't know what the backstory of this is. We don't know what the CIA's involvement in this is. We don't know what the real plan of this is because we're not getting honest reporting coming out of Ukraine. Chris, you want to comment? I'm going to pull a couple of books here. I want to talk about a couple of books people need to be aware of. Well, we don't what? get a lot of honest reporting out of anywhere these days. I do know that. Uh, there were reports recently that uh, the, uh, I, I struggled to pronounce his name, Evgeny uh, uh, Prigozhin, uh, if any, uh, the, the CEO of the Wagner. Uh, Pogosin, Pogosin, right, I think Pogosin. it's Hudson. Right. He, I think uh, that's correct. There are reports saying now after his exile to Belarus, he's missing. Of course, he goes, to, why would he go to Belarus anyway? Because uh, Lukashenko will do anything Putin tells him to do. That's probably the least safe place aside from Russia for somebody like Prigozhin. Unless it's all uh, a plot of some kind or other. It, it's, it smacks of it only because the guy was sent to Belarus or he actually went there. That, that, and that's supposedly the story. But again, we're supposed to forget that uh, Lukashenko is not the same Lukashenko as he was back in, I guess, the Obama era. This is the guy now who'll do anything Putin tells him to do. Yeah, I mean, this is the Belarus is basically a satellite of Moscow. And uh, the, uh, the whole threat here, if tactical nuclear weapons are used in Ukraine, the fallout of the tactical nuclear weapons into Poland are, is going to be catastrophic. You're going to find that you know the Russia is going not going to renew the deal on the Black Sea. So Ukraine, this coming harvest, which is you know imminent, is not going to be able to ship its grain by sea. So you're going to have large parts of Africa starving. Will they be able to send us bugs? Maybe we can eat those. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the African migration, if you've watched it, if you watch any European news, the Europeans are getting inundated with African immigrants coming over in these boats across the Mediterranean. And increasingly, the European nations are realizing that this wave of immigration, we've had a massive immigration out of the Middle East, which are Muslims immigrating into Europe, France, UK, uh, all, virtually all these countries. And they're bringing with them their culture, and the same with Africa. Now, Europe, which used to be a you know, Christian culture, Judeo-Christian culture, well, of course, Hitler did everything he could to get rid of the Jews. And uh, now I think the great cathedrals of the world are at risk. Uh, we're, if we basically lose the Christian culture, and this is why I'm going to have to get Jonathan Kahn on the program. I should try to contact him, but there's two or three books I want people to be aware of that I've been reading, and this is one, Jonathan Kahn's Return of the Gods. The basic premise of this book is that when we abandon God, the, the gods that come in are these dark gods, which are Baal, Istafar, uh, they are the ancient pagan spirits, and they're largely hermaphrodite. They're male, female. They're engaged in bizarre um, practices. If you remember Baal, the Israelites, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, 
ball with two A's. Here, here's a rule of thumb. If it's too hard to spell, then don't worship it. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. <laughs> there we go. What prophet Isaiah wrote of the Israel's fall to idols, their land is also full of idols. They worship the work off of their own hands. It's the irony of idolatry. They worship as gods the very things that they themselves had created, the work of their own hands. They created their own balls. They became, this is all an attempt to say, we are God. We are God, and we don't need to have God. Uh, it's a, this is a, a dark period of time. Uh, Istafar, she was a sorceress, known for her powers to alter people's affections, passions, thoughts, at time, their essence. We are now about to see how, as a sorceress, she would alter more than human relations and institutions in our modern world. The sexual revolution was the first of her renewed works. This will be her second. The second Though connected to the first, would open up a different realm. It would alter the human desire, human identity, human nature itself. The transformation would follow the goddess's own nature. There's something different about Istafar. I am a woman. I am a man. That's Istafar. And that's what is uh, coming into the world. Um, over the weekend, I also saw, I'm going to pull another book, one second. And as uh, if you're new to the program, keep uh, keep noticing that this is not a fake background. Doctor, that's not using these are these all are real books back there. <laughs> these are real books. Okay, now the Hermetica, which is um, ancient Egyptian, and uh, they're very worth studying. They're very worth very interesting. Here's the book of Hermetica. Okay, and it's the ancient um, teachings of Hermes Trismegistus, who is Hermes three times strong. This is partly the, it's mystical. But uh, what, a part of this, which is the uh, As uh, Asclepius, Asclepius, which was a discussion here with Asclepius, which, um, we're not going to go into all the details, but what it does is it said that there will come a time in earth when we abandon God and uh, we're it becomes a very very dark period of time and it's described in detail uh, the let's see uh, the, okay so they're talking about Egypt uh, going back where divinity we had uh, goes back as far as to heaven there when, when this when they abandon God people will die deserted Egypt will be whittled and deserted by God. I call to you the most holy river, and I, you know, he's basically saying the devastation is spelled out in detail. Uh, they'll prefer shadows to light. They'll find death more expedient than life. No one will look up to heaven. The reverent will be thought mad, the irreverent wise, the lunatic will be thought brave, and the scoundrel will be taken for a decent person. Soul and all teachings about soul, the soul began as immortal or else expects to attain immortality as I reveal them to you will be considered not simply laughable, but even illusionary souls. But believe me, whoever dedicates himself to reverence of mind will find himself facing a capital penalty for belief in God. They will establish new laws, new justice, nothing holy, nothing reverent, nor worthy of heaven or heavenly beings will be heard of or believed in the mind. This is three or 4,000 years ago. And it repeats the warning of apocalypse, which is a warning that when we abandon God and, and decide that we can create transhumanism and life extension with artificial intelligence and we can have digital currency and everyone have a social score and we can architect the perfect world, we're being led into slavery. And uh, it's something I've been trying desperately to prevent. And I don't know how successful we'll be, but what we've got here is a fundamental Marxism. Here, this book I keep recommending to everybody. It's a hard book to read, but what the it's written by a Japanese Marxist who says this is degrowth communism. 
saying Marx in the Anthropocene. In other words, they're reading neo-Marxism as saying we've got to have a cultural movement to um, go green. And climate change is at the core. They say it's the Anthropocene. Anthropocene, anthropos is the ancient Greek word for human being. And the Anthropocene, we're our cause of our own destruction. We, we exhale carbon dioxide. This entire new agenda is, it, it's a determined destruction of the economy, of our morals, of our families, and human beings cannot live this way without degenerating into war. And with nuclear weapons around, we'll have nuclear war if we don't stop this madness and return to God and the basic fundamentals uh, that we've been taught for ages. Instead, we've got Macron, who is now having this Paris summit. And this last story I want to cover, he's now saying that they want an international tax to subsidize the green agenda to, my, to mitigate climate change. I'm going to combine that with the fact that there's now predictions that meat prices are going to triple in the coming weeks because we're going to have a shortage of beef. And again, these are planned destructions, planned destructions of our cities, planned destructions of our tax base. Um, I encourage everybody, the, the book I've written on this coming at global crash is happening. And uh, I'm telling everybody, get out of the stock market. We ran a program last week with Eric Smith. Eric Smith has this tool. He's one of our sponsors, Decision Technologies. You can find out how good your mutual fund is doing compared to others in its class. It's a very, very important tool. And what we're finding is that this ESG investing is going to probably hurt a lot of pensioners because now even the Department of Labor wants you to be able to invest in funds that sponsor companies because they're diversity. You know, and, and it's more important to have diversity. Uh, these gay parades where you know, people displaying their genitals to children, nude in the streets, bizarre behavior, uh, this is insanity. And, and the paganism that is caused in the ancient world uh, destroyed Rome's greatness. Rome turned... Christian, because the mothers were tired of their children have becoming perverts. And that's going to happen again. We've got to have universal school choice, get out of the public schools. Uh, I'm passionate about these subjects because I see on the horizon a coming economic crash. I'm encouraging you, please go to Swiss America. This book I've written is with Dean Heskin. He is the head of Swiss America. We're going to be working very hard in the next period of time to get people aware that the stock market is going to tumble. It's A crash is set up. Get Go to this Walking Liberty half dollar. You can get up 250 of these in an introductory offer for virtually the cost of the silver in these coins. Silver is going to appreciate dramatically. Fill out the form and talk to Swiss America. And begin thinking about getting your IRAs, your 401ks into gold. It, it will double in what we're going to go through. Gold has doubled in the last two crises we've had, 2008, subprime real estate. We've now got commercial real estate crashing. In the 1970s, the energy crisis. We've now got an energy crisis that is this determined destruction. The left wants to destroy America. We've raised a generation that have been taught in the schools to hate America. And John Kerry's over there again with the climate change agenda. His daughter is getting appointed as the head of the WHO. I mean, the, uh, this Klaus Schwab's the economic forum, World Economic Forum, as, as their climate guru. John Kerry also is the one who architected Obama's deal with Iran. Iran is on the path of creating nuclear weapons. The Biden administration is supporting Iran and allowing Iran to get back into the oil business, which will allow Iran to have more revenue for terrorism and expanding violence throughout the Middle East and the world. 
Iran has nuclear weapons, Israel's going to have to confront it. Uh, these are, I've been predicting and working on these things uh, for decades. Uh, the last book I want to mention to you, this is a very good book too. It's uh, by a guy named uh, Shafarich. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name right. Socialist Phenomenon. He was a, uh, a very brilliant um, guy. He basically traced the history of socialism back to Plato's Republic, in which they do discuss the whole idea of there being a shared property, even shared wives, so no one knew who the children were. Uh, in, the, in the Republic, Socrates aban ultimately abandons the idea, says it doesn't work. And, uh, but it's seriously considered. These ideas of communism are ancient. There's nothing new here. Karl Marx was using ideas that have been around since you know 2,000 years. The idea we could have social justice if we merely didn't have private property. Well, we need to have private property. We need to have families. We need to have nations. This is by this fundamental human nature. And we need to have God. And uh, these are themes that I'm constantly uh, enforcing and trying to reinforce. We're today, we're going to have a broadcast later today. We're going to be putting it on social media with Douglas Horn. Douglas Horn is one of my heroes. He had a great career in the Navy. Then he worked for the Assassinations Records Review Board after Oliver Stone's movie. And he did great work. I've got the five volumes right behind me. These black books are all Douglas Horn's books on the ARRB. And they show how the medical evidence in Kennedy's assassination was altered in order to hide the fact that he was shot by a crossfire. I'm working on a new book on that, which will prove that Kennedy was hit by a crossfire. Scientifically prove it. The point is, Douglas Horn has also investigated Pearl Harbor. Shown the Pearl Harbor was intended by Roosevelt in order to get us in the war. It's going to be a very fascinating two hours. Now, Douglas Horn has written two volumes on Pearl Harbor and a book on the McCollum Memo Memorandum, which we're going to cover today. I encourage people to listen to these. These are the truth. And what we need to reverse this is truth, to expose these lies, to expose the nonsense we're being told and, being, and is being taught in our schools. Chris, do you have any final comments before we wrap up? Well, always, always look for the truth beneath the surface. That's what uh, you're saying here. That's what we all should do. Even the public schools, they can really, they can't, they can only go so far when they're teaching, even if they're telling you uh, some of the truth here. But you still need people need to do their own research, and I know it's very difficult to do so. There's dubious research out there on the internet, so we all know the if it's on the internet, it's a true thing. <laughs> the big joke with that. The fact is. Uh, there is enough information out there where you can pretty much form your own opinion and also look for more from that point forward. There's good investigative journalists working today. Right. They're, they're suppressed. And you, yes. you know, we need to, I want to encourage people to read because it's only through reading and essentially uh, asking yourself hard questions about, you know, whether it's true or not. In the schools, instead of teaching, transgenderism i'd rather they taught mathematics taught reading taught the fundamental skills we don't need kindergarten children sexualized you know we need these kids to be able to mature as adults the way god intended have have years in which they are innocent in which they are beginning to develop their minds so that they can reason and discern for themselves what's true uh the lies that are being told by a leftist controlled government and media. And I think finally people are beginning to see the corruption in the Biden administration. I just don't know whether Congress or anyone else will do anything about it. Certainly the Justice Department will not. But if we don't have, there's so much buying of the, you know, James O'Keefe last week was exposing BlackRock, how easy it is to buy a senator. Uh, we have too much corruption. There's too much money too many buying off of people for agendas that are destructive. Um, let's wrap it up. And th today, this is Dr. Drone Corsi. This is 
Monday, it's June 26, 2023. I know this sounds dire. In the end, God always wins. God will win here too. I have no doubt about that. But in the, in the spirit of Second Chronicles 7.14, we need to get on our knees and ask God to forgive us for letting the Supreme Court in the 1940s take God out of the schools, that we didn't get more involved with the school boards or let the teachers' union control with their leftist agenda. We've had these uh, Democratic-run cities, which are bankrupt and are now with an agenda that wants to allow lawlessness. Uh, this is a downward cycle. And uh, I'm warning everyone that it will result in a massive global economic downturn. Right now, so much money is being pumped in. The stock market may stay at 33,000 in Dow Jones for a while. But when it goes, it could lose 10,000 points. And if you've got your retirement savings in stocks, I'm, inc I'm imploring you, this is a time to get out of stocks. Take your gains. You know, if you don't get out earlier or before a crash, the worst that can happen is I'm wrong and you go back in and it's a little bit more expensive. But don't bet on it. Not with the collapses that are coming in commercial real estate, with the debt crises, with the banks on edge and not having sufficient assets. This is a formula for mass economic meltdown. Prepare yourselves and take a look at our sponsors. People are saying I'm looking younger. Well, I'm certainly more active and more involved these days. And take a look at my Vital C. Uh, it's an extremely useful molecule, carbon-60. It has longevity principles. They have hair creams. They have uh, skin creams. This is the company that was working with the discoverers in Houston. The, a few, 40 years ago, maybe started to understand the carbon-60, this atom, a molecule rather, 60 carbon atoms in a structure of uh, around, around a nucleus, cage structure like a soccer ball. This is a remarkable uh, molecule, and I encourage you to try it. Please, if you like the show and, and like what we're doing, like us, um, put us out in social media, and support our sponsors. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Jerome Corsi. We'll be back tomorrow broadcasting every weekday. Thank you for joining us on the Truth Central. God bless. <laughs>